Well, uh, so we just got this rig about six months ago. So we've only been using the washer and dryer for about six months and we just got this F7E1 error code. So that's wonderful. So when you get these error codes or when anything goes wrong with, with, these, uh, with this washer or dryer, they say the first thing you should do is cycle the power, leave it off for a certain amount of time, turn it back on. We did all that, nothing worked. We're still getting the error code. Everything you can think of, I have to pull the washer out and see what's wrong with it. Uh, but that's what we're gonna show you right now. It's pretty simple. But the first thing you do is just take this off, which this just pops right off. All right, you see that little notch right there? You just got to take a little flathead and pop that out and, and it just pops right off pretty easy once it, when it's in there, right? And then what you're going to do is to get the dryer off, you just take a Phillips head screwdriver and you're going to remove these three. As you see, they used a uh, self-tapping screw like this. You have to lift up the dryer over this and then it just slides right out. When you first go to do that, because they use these uh, self-tapping screws, the first time you go to remove this, it's going to be kind of stuck. So you'll have to take a little flathead maybe and just kind of wedge that out a little bit and then it'll pop right out. But that's all you do with that. All right, so I got the dryer out and what I was talking about is I had to actually have my wife come in here and while I was holding it out, because it wouldn't come out all the way because this right here is a little bit too short. It's about as far as it goes. So I had my wife kind of hold it steady for me. It's very light. And then, uh, you know, that, that piece is attached here. So I just had to get the flathead screwdriver, loosen this, loosen this up a little bit with the flathead and it pops right off. And then we were able to unplug it from the back wall there and just drop it right on top of the bed, very light. So now I'm gonna take the washer out. Before I take that out, I kind of go over some of the things they tell you to do to try to fix the error codes. But one of the things is to take this, this out right here and then you just, this twists to the left and pulls out. Uh, water will come out of here, so we use like a cookie sheet to kind of keep the water in a towel to keep the water from, from pulling up too much. It's a little filter that you, uh, you can clean out. It wasn't that dirty for us, so that wasn't it. The other thing that they say to do is to check this drain. Check this drain pipe to make sure there's no water stuck in there or anything that's clogging it to keep the water from coming out. I actually took a vacuum and sucked anything out of there was barely any water still in this thing. So, that, so that's not it. I couldn't find anything about these error codes on Google and you won't. And you won't even in the manual for Splendid. It's not in the manual. It just says any error between I think E4 and e, E12 or whatever you have to call the manufacturer. So open the door right here and ours has a nice little part number plus the serial number. It's the only two things you're going to need when you call them the part or the the serial number and you got the number for your service department right there and they were pretty quick quick to tell me that it was actually the there's a board in here that's right in the front that kind of sits right in the front of this and it's the motherboard for the system and they said that it's a bad motherboard so luckily it's under warranty and they were they sent it to me it got here in i think three or four days that just came in, so now I'm gonna take the washer out. So I could have sent it in. I could have taken it into somewhere because they'll find like a local person that can fix it for you. I could have done that, but I asked him and he said, it's pretty easy. He sent me uh, some stuff. He sent me an email and kind of what to look for. He said, you just access it from the bottom and uh, hopefully I can figure it out and, and get this thing fixed. So all you have to do to pull these washer out, the only way it's is these two clamps here. There's one on both sides and they go in just like this. And it, you just have to tilt this back Tilt this back a little bit, and uh, once you unscrew the two the two screws that go in both, tilt it back, and they slide right off, or they slide off like that from the legs inside the washer. And that's it. So I took those off, and here's the screws. I'm gonna pull it out. All right. So what I did is this this washer's heavy, and I got to get out of here. And the corner of the beds kind of makes it hard, especially if you've got a, a mattress that's not an RV mattress. But put this cardboard here underneath it to keep it from. So when they installed it, they scratched the heck out of our piece of wood right there. Easy fix to, to replace that, but still. So I'm trying to reduce the amount of damage we're gonna cause trying to get this out of here. I can't lift it by myself. I don't even think, cause it's just hard to get in. You know, there, there's, it's so tight that you can't really lift it high enough to get it over the bed. So I'm gonna slide it out on an angle. And hopefully me and the wife can handle it. Right, so we were able to get it out of there. Wasn't too bad. I was able to actually grab the handle and there's a lip on the back that I grabbed right here with my right hand, grabbed the handle, and I was able to kind of lift it and 
lift it and pull it out and turn it as uh, my wife kind of held that corner of the bed up and I just carried it up, but it was difficult. I'm a big guy, so it wasn't too bad for me, but it's gonna definitely be a, a two to three person job if, if it's something you're gonna have to do, but got it out now. Next step is I'm just gonna unplug these water hoses. I'm gonna actually do it in here. I just need to turn it on its side in here and I think I have enough room to kind of get it done. So uh, I got a bucket right here and a towel to catch some water and I'm gonna undo these hoses. That way they're not in the way. Just put the towel down a little bit lower to catch anything I miss. Also, I just had to shut the water off. <laughs> you wanna make sure you shut the water off first. Whoopsie. Good thing I got the towel. All right, so the next step is to just turn it over on its side. And uh, so I can access it from the bottom. That's how I was told I can access that front panel. Turns out it is not that board that I'm replacing. The board that I'm replacing is actually gonna be at the bottom of the wash, uh, washing machine. So I got some instructions from Splendid, not a video, just a, an email, but it tells you to put it on its right side. So I did that, I'm gonna remove that panel now, but first I'm going to open up my box. Hopefully it's the right piece. Oh look, they even send you the instructions right here too. That's pretty cool. Oh, so this is the piece I'm actually replacing. Crazy that this went bad on me in uh, what, six months, about six months, I think maybe even slightly less. Cool instructions, the instructions that they sent me in the email are a little bit more detailed than this. So I'll uh, reference those as I'm taking them apart, but that actually looks like what they sent me in the email. That's about it. Said all you need is some wire cutters, needle nose pliers. There's another little tool, just like a little prick tool that you need to maybe undo some of the, some of these pieces, but I'm gonna have to make do with what I have because I don't have one of those tools. So I'm just gonna remove this panel right here. Loosen on. Just have to loosen that one and then the whole thing just pulls right out. But that's it. Here's the piece I need to replace right here. That's the piece I'm replacing. So the first thing I have to do is move this hose out. And there's a little clip back here. Just undo it. And then I need to pull some of this hose. There's a drain hose. This is what this is. This is the drain hose. I need to pull some of this inside so I can access uh, the board. So I'm just going to just pop this clip out. All right, so according to the instructions, the first thing we can do is pop these two little pins right here. And this pops up. Gives you access to loosen up these wires. And this, there's a little lever back here in the corner. Two little levers here. And this thing pops off. That little L-shaped cover. Should give you access to the wires here. All right, so once you loosen up some of the wiring here, I can get the wiring off. And then there's two screws right down there that you have to unscrew to get it out. But you need one of these, one of those uh, star-shaped bits you're gonna have to use to uh, undo those screws. So we're gonna do that right now. I right, got both of those out. All right, so once you remove those screws, it's just fixed into this little piece back there. It's that little black piece right there. And all you do is, it's kinda got some slots in it. And all you do is just push it, and it pops right out. All right, so I got the board pulled out, and now I'm just going to disconnect all these connect all these uh, connections. Now some of these will go back into the new board, but some of these will be replaced by this harness. All right, so once you, uh, this is actually the new harness I got on here attached already. Once you untape this, these wires right here that are coming from the, the top of the machine, once you un untape these, from this uh, the wiring harness for the motor, you can, you can pull this apart and then you can see what actually goes with what. So I cut all the tape away, I pulled everything apart, got the new motor off. The hardest part was getting, these ones come off pretty easy and the ones on the side here, uh, it's the ones that are in the middle here, these big fittings that were kind of hard to get out if you don't have the right tool. I just used a, a really tiny Allen wrench and that helped a little bit. Uh, there's a schematic that they send you, which showed me exactly where to uh, put the wires back, plug everything back in. 
that was helpful, but I also took pictures of everything before I unplugged it, so I could just reference it when I was uh, putting everything back in order, so. Got everything back plugged in. This is the new the new board. Everything's plugged into it in the right space. I referenced my pictures just to make sure. Now I'm just gonna tape up these wires and uh, make it look pretty before I uh, get it back installed inside the machine. So I got it all screwed back in, got it back in place, put the cover back on. I had all the wires nice and taped up. Uh, you wanna make sure you tape up the wires really good so everything's tight because this is moving around a lot in here and there's a lot of sharp edges. So if a wire gets loose and gets caught on anything, you can cause yourself a bunch of problems. So a little bit of, I taped this to the hose. They recommend doing that, taping, uh, taping the harness to the drain hose right here. So I did that. I also taped the drain hose right here just to make sure it's a little bit more secure. It's all taped up, everything's plugged back in. So I'm gonna put the bottom back on and go from there. Hopefully everything works. And the edge slides inside there. You gotta make sure you do that right. Make sure you put everything back the way it goes. It's always a good idea to take a bunch of pictures of stuff before you take things apart if you're doing it yourself. The last thing you want is to dismantle something and go to put it back together and nothing fits. All right, that's back together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it up and before I put it back inside the cubby, uh, I'm gonna start it. All right, so I just uh, hooked everything back up without putting it in there and plugged it back in. And I turned it on. I put it to uh, lightly soiled, pressed start just to see what would happen. And it started spinning, looking for, you know, trying to test the load. So looks like it's working. That was the fix that worked. All right, so it's all plugged back in. Everything's hooked up. Put it on regular Hold for three seconds. Let's see if it works. Fingers crossed. Oh, looks like it's sensing. It's working. Things locked, that's a good sign. That is a very good sign. And I hear water. Hear water going in, that's another good sign. Another thing you always wanna look for also is we had water leak, maybe our second week using this. Oh, looks like everything's working. So we had a water leak and it was because I had opened this up and when I closed it, it didn't close all the way and the water comes into here before it goes into the washer. So if you do what I did, then you're gonna have a leak coming out of this. It looks like it's working. Yay! Yay! Ah. Hey, come on, let's, let's talk about this. <laughs> no, haven't done my hair yet. <laughs> So, so if you get that that error code E1F7, if you get that error code for your Splendid stackable, and it's supposed to be one of the best ones on the market, so nothing was really happening with it. It was working fine, and then I think it got towards the end of one load and just stopped. It wouldn't finish the load, and we didn't get any error codes at first until we went ahead and cycled the machine. And when we cycled the machine, like unplugged it, uh, unplugged it back in, that's when we got the error code. So. Like I said, it's not in the manual. I tried Googling it, there was nothing online that I could find. So I ended up calling uh, Splendid and they told me it was the module board connection. So the module board for the motor, that's what it was problem. And they sent this right out to me with instructions and it was pretty easy to do. You can do it yourself, you don't have to pay and wait. I mean, you can send this into somebody, you have to wait for them to, to get done with it. I just took care of it for myself and worked out. Yay! What was that, babe? Yay! So now we got a uh, working washing, washing machine head. again. So, I mean, it's, it's a little stressful when you get these because like I said, we had the leak. So stressful. Yeah, we had the leak and that was stressful, but we figured that out. But then this happened a couple weeks later with the, uh, the error codes and that was a little stressful too. All in all, having a washer is, well, Lenny can tell you. Do you love it? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> So we're happy, crises averted. If this helped you out, and I hope it did, uh, please subscribe, like, comment, hit the thumbs up button. We greatly appreciate it, so until next time. All right, so I wanted to show you quick on this a uh, couple things, because it's a little bit easier to see now that it's now that I have it out there completely. This is the old, the old board. So when it's in there, it sits in there like this when you're looking at the back of the machine. So this, this has a little tab and it pops up and it's connected right here and it's, it only comes up about this far, uh, not very far at all. And so when I was pulling it back to try and get to these wires, it actually just kind of snapped, which doesn't matter really. The new one I was a little more careful with, so I didn't snap it, but just be careful with that. You don't snap it, it'll still go back on. And when it's pushed against those wires, it snaps back in place and still works, still locks it. 
but that's just a little cover. So that comes off pretty easy with these two tabs. These two tabs right here, and that pulls out, that thing pops up, and that's how you access it. Now, what I also noticed when I got the uh, the invoice, if I, if I look like I'm perspiring a little, it's because it's, it's hot in here. I'm trying not to run the AC for so I get better sound quality for you. Uh, I noticed when I was looking at the receipt, this happens to you and you're not under warranty. Um, most likely they'll you call them and they'll send it for you and you charge you whatever, they'll send you the right piece. But if you want to look for this piece and it's not under warranty, warranty, it's called a module board assembly WFL1300XD, which that's the that's what the washer is. That washer is the WFL. 1300 XT so it's the module board assembly and then the wiring power motor to board red so the wiring harness that goes with it um, the actual item numbers for the module board is 637623 and the item number for the wiring harness is 647752F7 F is in Frank 7 and it actually tells you the reason for that F7E1 error code that you get that you can't look up online or, or in, even in the uh, manual but it's called motor unlock speed failure so if you get the F7E1 error code on your machine, it's the motor unlock speed failure, and that's the fix, is replacing this board with the wire harness. That's it, pretty easy, hope it helps.